So it might just be that Apple is ready to bring back a feature that they should have never canceled from iPhones. Because yes, even if it's still very early, we keep getting more and more details on what to expect for the iPhone 13 this year. Speaking of things you should expect from Apple, it looks like 2021 will bring some major changes to the iMac, Mac Pro, and more. And we have some leaks of new features we should expect for Android 12, if you can actually call them new. I'm Jaime Rivera, and you know, I always thought that the whole concept of taking photos of the moon with a Galaxy phone because of the marketing was overrated, but you should seriously try the S21 Ultra. This is Pocket Now Daily. You know how it goes, new week, new me, or should I say new, more compelling options for the deals that had already existed if you pre-ordered the Galaxy S21. The Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, S21 Ultra, and all other products announced last week are still available for pre-orders, giving you some very nice perks that just got better. In the case of the Galaxy S21, you can get it for as low as $99, with an extra $100 in instant credit and a free smart tag. The S21 Plus for $299, with an extra $150 in instant credit, plus a smart tag, and then the Galaxy S21 Ultra for 499 plus an extra $200 in instant credit and a smart tag. And by the way, for those new perks, now with four months of YouTube Premium and six months of Spotify Premium. I know. Also, if you're looking for the best rugged cases that money can buy for the S21, Subcase is our most recommended option. We'll be sure to link to these both on Amazon and also subcase.com for you to use code POCKETNOW15 to get an extra 15% discount. Oh, and by the way, those other trade-in deals for devices like the Galaxy Z Fold 2 for just $1,000 plus a trade-in are still available. We'll be sure to link to those in the description as well. But then moving on from Samsung, the Google Pixel 4a is currently $40 off. So you can get the entry-level variant for $450. The new iPad Air is $40 off, leaving the entry-level model at $559. And then we've also got discounts like $20 off for the 128 gigabyte iPad. We have more deals on monitors, iPad Pros, and other Samsung products in the description. And while you're at it, remember, we partnered with Subcase to give away a Galaxy S21 and a Galaxy S21 Ultra. So make sure you follow the second link in the description and enter promo code POCKETNOWGALAXY. That'll enhance your chances to win. Now, let's move on to Qualcomm, particularly for an announcement that the company made today that makes the Snapdragon 888 even more confusing or their lineup per se. The company just launched the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 SoC, which is the follow-up to the Snapdragon 865 Plus, meaning it's kind of a prequel to the 888 5G. This new SoC is built on a seven nanometer process and it comes with Qualcomm's Cryo 585 CPU with a prime clock speed of 3.2 gigahertz. When it comes to the GPU, you're getting the Adreno 650 GPU and it also brings both flavors of 5G thanks to the Snapdragon Dragon X55 modem. This SoC supports things like 4K displays at 60 Hz and Quad HD Plus displays at 144 Hz, 10-bit color, HDR10, and HDR10+. When it comes to the camera, it brings a Spectra 480 ISP, which allows for up to 200 megapixel photo captures. It supports 25 megapixel dual cameras and even 8K video. This chip will power different devices from companies like Motorola, Oppo, Xiaomi, and listen to this one, OnePlus. It even makes me wonder if this is the processor behind the OnePlus 9 Lite? Who knows? So yeah, I'm actually wondering if this new Snapdragon 870 is the 2021, what the 765G was the 2020. There's only one way to find out. Expect some products right now in Q1. Now, we're just a couple of weeks away from whenever we're going to get the next generation Android developer beta, and obviously that only means that leaks are going to start to emerge. Let's begin today. A couple of weeks ago, we got a tweet from XDA saying that Android 12 might let you hibernate unused applications in order to free up space, kind of like what iOS does when it uninstalls the applications you don't use after some time. But that's actually not a new feature. This was actually brought by Nextbit years ago and actually to Android. Now we have some screenshots of Android's open source code showing that we will be getting this feature. The system will manage the application hibernation state to optimize storage and it'll clear the cache for this application. When the app is hibernated for a single user, it'll hibernate it for other users though. But keep in mind your data will remain in the application so that once you need it again, you just have to 
press the download and pick up right where you left off. It's not exactly clear how this will work as the developer preview isn't out yet. It's definitely nice to have, especially at a time when devices are losing their SD cards. We'll keep you posted as more information emerges as obviously this is not necessarily what I would call new. Now let's move on to Apple and particularly Apple Silicon Macs as all eyes on what the company is doing, especially Intel. According to a new report from Mark Gurman and Bloomberg, those redesigned MacBook Pros we talked about last week aren't the only things we're getting from Cupertino this year. The report claims that Apple is planning to launch two new iMacs to replace the Intel 21.5-inch and 27-inch models with Apple Silicon. Apparently, the internals aren't the only thing that's changing, though, as Gurman claims that we are finally losing the thick bezels in favor of a cleaner design, kind of like what we get with the Pro Display XDR, and that also goes for the curved back, which will apparently now be flat. The report says that this is one of the biggest visual updates to any Apple product this year. But wait, there's more. Apple is reportedly looking to refresh the Mac Pro as well. This new model will retain the cheese grater design we got in 2019, and it will also retain the Intel processor as one of the last machines to do so before Apple finishes the transition, and it'll most likely just bring better internals. However, we might be getting a second and smaller model, which will feature an aluminum exterior, which can resemble the Power Mac G4 Cube that actually flopped years ago. Anyways, finally, Cupertino is working on a more affordable monitor geared towards the average consumer. But of course, it won't bring the same levels of brightness or contrast ratio that we get with the Pro Display XDR. Just do me a favor, Apple. Don't sell the stand separately and don't make it or price it uh, in a way where it's more expensive than an iPhone. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with Apple, even if early, iPhone 13 or even the future of what to expect for the iPhone lineup as we've got a lot of reports. See, Mark Gurman's report digs into what we can expect soon and what we can expect in the future. So let's start with what you might not get just yet. According to him, Apple has already developed foldable screens for internal testing. Now, even if they are progressing with this project, apparently it is only limited to the screen stage and they don't really have a prototype of an actual folding iPhone just yet. Mark claims that one of the options on the table is a 6.7 inch panel, which pretty much sounds like if this will actually be a clamshell iPhone instead of a tablet. Now, moving on to other projects we might get as soon as this year, it looks like Cupertino wants to bring back Touch ID, which makes all the sense in the world considering these times. According to them, Apple is testing in-display fingerprint sensors for 2021 iPhones, a rumor which we've heard multiple times. However, this doesn't mean Face ID is dying. Even though the notch is apparently gonna get smaller, we will reportedly be getting both ways to unlock your device. And I mean, if they can't add it to the display, they can also do it in the power button which is something that iPads are adopting slowly. So far, it looks like the major improvements for iPhone 13 will come with the hardware changes like the smaller notch, the higher refresh rate, and now Touch ID. Now anyways, let us know in the comments down below what features you would like to get in the iPhone 13, because in my case, honestly, yes, Touch ID, definitely 120 hertz in the display, a periscopic zoom lens in the camera, and uh, I mean, hey, if it could serve me a drink or give me dinner, that'd be great. <laughs> Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social media so our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to be surprised by the phone that I did not expect to be surprised from. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.